Well, welcome everyone to our hole in one spring fling solve any disruption across any IT infrastructure webinar. I'm Dana Tarlow, Senior Client Relationship Specialist here at Comport. Before we get to our Zerto keynote speaker and our golf pro, I'd like you to know a little bit about Comport. Um, during this webinar, we're going to go drop some questions into the chat. So if you have a minute, please take it and answer them if you can. We'd appreciate that. So Comport is an IT consulting firm with expertise in data center modernization, hybrid cloud, infrastructure and network design, and security. We've proudly served our clients for over 42 years, which I'm sure you'll all agree that's really impressive in this industry. There are four main areas of our business that may be helpful for you to understand. We do managed services and as a service offerings. Our portfolio includes disaster recovery as a service, backup as a service, and infrastructure as a service as well. We have hosting services with three data centers in Atlanta, Las Vegas, and Minneapolis. And we offer flexible pricing models to meet your needs. Another area for us is hybrid infrastructure. From storage and compute to data protection and backup, archive, AI, and high performance computing. We specialize in providing solutions tailored to your needs. Networking and security. We believe in layered security and will help you identify gaps and risks. We have a very strong networking practice with wireless, core, and edge solutions. And then lastly, pro services and assessments. Our suite of assessments provides our clients detailed insights to help you make informed and cost-effective decisions. We pride ourselves here at Comport on our culture that goes the extra mile. Emphasizing listening, integrity, ownership, and excellence. And I'm particularly proud that the Comport achieve successful outcomes by investing in top talent, continuous training here, and fostering strategic partnerships, including our collaboration with our partner, Zerto. Now I'd like to introduce you to, to, to Lynette Strachey. Lynette brings over two decades of experience in the IT industry. Her expertise lies in security and data protection, particularly for cyber resilience. What sets Lynette apart is her unwavering passion and extensive knowledge of both customers' requirements and the industry's leading effectiveness of Zerto. When the worst happens, whether planned or unplanned, and you need to get your company back up fast. Without further ado, Lynette, over to you for an enlightening discussion on how Zerto elevates your business's resilience and data protection. Wonderful. Thank you, Dana. And hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today. And, you know, very much looking forward to the opportunity here to present to you all. Let me just take a moment and get my slide deck ready. So let's see here. So let me just do a test. Uh, can everybody see my um, opening, my title slide, automating data resilience and recovery? Yes. All right. Great. Good to go. So yes, yeah, so I'm in channel sales here at uh, Zerto, and you know, as Dana said, you know, um, I do have some passion um, around this this field. Right, um, it's great to work for a company with amazing technology when you really feel like you're helping customers. Right, and in this day and age, right, in, in order to help you recover um, and speed that recovery to really avoid the significant impacts that we're seeing from data loss and downtime. You know, from different incidences, obviously, you know, you're going to hear me say the R word a bunch of times uh, in the next 20 minutes. But, you know, really what Zerto can do to help lower that impact and speed your time to recoverability, right? So as I get into what we do and how we do it, I'll be focusing on um, capabilities around our journal-based recovery, app-centric approach you know, our use of one to many, right? So you can quickly kind of evolve your data protection strategy from a three, two, one to a four, three, two. 
and then how we offer some intelligent automation and built-in orchestration that takes out the human error, right, and speeds your recovery, um, as well as the all-important testing, right, something you can never um, get to do or put on the shelf and, you know, um, save it for a rainy day, right? Testing is the premier thing that we need to focus on in terms of understanding, are we recoverable? Are we protected? How is this going to turn out when we're in our worst hour, right? And really, you know, so to launch into this, right? So in the DR world, right? In the disaster recovery field, you know, we've, we've had some changes, right? I mean, it hasn't been um, fast, right? It's been It's been evolving. But, you know, we used to focus on things like hardwood hardware failures, power outages, right? Data corruptions and, you know, uh, data centers going down due to natural disasters and things of that nature. Oh, I guess it can't wait for me to hit it. <laughs> um, right, so what we're seeing now is 61% of our um, DR incidences that we're seeing are, are based on ransomware, right? And how is this different, right? Because there are significant impacts. Um, you know, with data loss, with downtime that we're seeing with ransomware that we don't see with other DR incidences, right? Um, you know, one of these is obviously, you know, the encryption, right, and the stealing and holding ransom of our critical data, right? Um, there are instances where when organizations are between a rock and a hard place and they have to choose, right, between getting their data back and not, they're paying that ransom. But what we're seeing is, you know, on average, you know, 4% of organizations who paid the ransom actually got all of their data back, right? Um, to me, I'm not a betting woman, but even if I, I were, I would not put money on that, right? Only 4% of organizations, right, actually get all of their data back. You know, and the time that it actually, you know, takes, um, you know, to get back up and running after some of these attacks, right? They're becoming more sophisticated, um, you know, they're, they're changing their tactics, right? Each incident truly is unique. As an example, you know, we talk about ransomware around a lot and encryption, right? Hospitals, healthcare organizations are impacted by this. Well, a recent change um, that we've seen is um, we're cyber criminals who um, went after and targeted a specific hospital. They didn't just encrypt their data. They actually changed the meds for some of their most critical patients. They called the hospital and said, hey, we've accessed your records, we've made these changes, now pay us, right? So, you know, how, how do you recover from that, right? What does that mean, right? Um, these, you know, different tactics are gonna continue to evolve. So how do we respond to those? It's a difficult question, right? And then the impact is growing, right? When I first started um, kind of in the industry and we started watching this, right, it was, $2 million per incident, right? Now it's it's grown to five and and actually we actually know kind of downstream, it's it's most likely this is a low number, it's a lot more, right? So really where we focus, where Zerto focuses is what we call on the right-hand side of the boom, right? So incident occurs, you're looking to speed that recovery. So as an organization, you have probably spent a lot of time evaluating and installing and using a lot of the preventative and proactive um, security measures, right? Uh, network security and endpoint, right? Things of that nature to keep the bad guys out, right? Uh, to keep the threats at bay. But we all know that no one can guarantee 100%, you know, um, the security organizations are doing the best that they can, but there's no way, you know, you know, I always use the illustration of, you know, you build the castle walls, right, to protect the fortress, but you can only build those castle walls so high, you're going to be breached. So then when you're on the other side of it, right, that right hand side, what are you doing to recover? Do you have the technology stack in place that helps you recover as quickly as possible? And that's what we'll be talking about, right? We kind of, you know, a little clarification, right? Um, if you are familiar with Zerto, if you have heard of us, you know, and if I would have asked and, um, asked you where we sat, you might have said, oh, you guys do backup, right? And we don't do backup. We sit alongside them. Uh, we're very complimentary. We augment them. We love our veins. We love our convolts, um, our cohesities, our rubrics, right? You know, I like to say we're the icing on the cake, right? We sit on top of them. And what I mean by that is when you're leveraging backup, 
you're using your backup to protect your entire data estate, right? What Zerto does is we're a repository, we're a journal in which you replicate your most critical data into, right? So we're working alongside, we're separate from your backup technology, right? And we're created a little different um, so that when, yes, we're not going to retain data for as long, but that allows us to recover it more quickly, right? So we are working alongside our backup friends right, to actually um, create a more resilient uh, data protection strategy and recovery strategy for you, which actually, you know, comes really in, you know, um, into play when we talk cyber re recovery. And, you know, when I say speed matters, right, we all know why, right, you got to get um, your applications, you got to get the data back in the hands of the folks that need it, right, as quickly as possible. But we also know that that financial impact, right, money matters, right? And so when you really break down the financial implications of your data protection strategy and what you have in place, right, the backups, right, they're there. They're absolutely necessary. You have to have those. But when we look at, you know, what your RPO, and for folks that may not be familiar with that acronym, that's um, recovery point objective, right? So that's basically saying at what point can you go back in time and recover from? You want that to be the smallest um, increment as possible, right, for your critical data, right? You don't want to lose any data. Like uh, United Airlines uses us for their web application, right? Because when they go down, they lose approximately a million dollars an hour, right? So you want to minimize that. Um, when you take a backup, that's every 24 hours. So if you're taking your backup at midnight, right, and then, you go, you know, you go through your day and an incident occurs at six o'clock, right, you have 18 hours potentially of data loss from that last backup. That backup is corrupted and you have to go back the next day at another 24 hours, right? So many of you, you know, who are on the line here, you know, probably use storage replication to augment that, right? So you take storage snapshots, you take that, you know, depending on what you determine is best for your organization, you know, you weigh the the storage and the cost implications of that, but you know, let's say um, you're using them um, every for every four hours, right? So you're able to recover data, but you have data loss, right? Where we're coming in is where that journal. I'll dig into a little bit more, but we use and make check marks, right? Um, where there are changes in your data that we're tracking and storing, made every five to ten seconds. So you can actually go back in time five seconds, ten seconds before an incident and recover your data, okay? So that speed does matter, right? Because it has a significant financial impact as we can see on the right-hand side. So as we dig into it, right? And we're not new to the game. Um, you know, we've been in this business since uh, 2011. Um, and really, you know, when you talk about DR, you'll hear a lot continuous data protection, right? And it's that near synchronous replication of creating a journal so that you can roll back in time. So we'll dig into the journal-based recovery. Um, as I mentioned, the app-centric uh, protection that we leverage and then um, real-time replication and detection that we're now using um, in order to further mitigate some things. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the orchestration and automation because as I mentioned before, that's extremely key, right? You know, when you're in your worst hour, right? You want to have ensured that all your necessary VMs are protected, that they're part of the recovery plan, and that they are recoverable. And you want that to be orchestrated in a way that humans don't have to use their judgment, right? They didn't sleep well the night before, they haven't eaten, and now they have this uh, incident that they're dealing with, right? Judgment is not is going to be impaired, right? And are they making the right decision? And then of all, all the you know nice things here below with the multi-cloud and the simplicity at scale, right? That really makes our solution even more valuable, right? Where we can um, help you leverage anything that might come down the road, right? Um, in terms of leveraging uh, Azure or AWS, you know, um, closing down a data center to, to leverage that, right? And then being able to scale these solutions as you grow. Um, you know, some of the keys are the fact that we are a software-based solution. Um, we work at the hypervisor level. We're hardware agnostic. And, you know, I like to say, you know, we help future-proof your technology um, investments, right? So regardless of where you are today and where you want to go in the future, you're going to be able to leverage them to do that, okay? So let's dig into it a little bit 
mentioned the journal. Um, you know, here's a nice representation of what the journal looks like, right? Each each little white dot is a check a checkpoint, right? A check mark indicating a change in your data, right? So we put that in the journal. Um, our journal um, can hold thousands of these checkpoints, i.e., restore points, right? Um, the journal can be anywhere from an hour to 30 days. On average, our customers uh, typically keep their journals for for seven, right? Um, so there are absolutely thousands of restore points that can be chosen within that journal. If an incident occurs here, as we see at 10 o'clock, we can roll back to 9:59 and 55 seconds, right, and restore from there. You might ask, well, if it's a ransomware attack, how do we potentially know that that those VMs, you know, haven't been corrupted? What we did about a year ago um, in our version 10 is we actually um, embedded uh, encryption detection within our solution, right? So it's part of version 10. It's not an add-on. It's there for you. And we use a couple different um, algorithms that actually learn encryption behavior for your organization. Uh, so, it, you know, you deploy it. It takes about a week, you know, for it to understand, you know, what what's typical for you. And then as anomalies pop up from an encryption standpoint, we actually, you know, use a checkpoint there, right? And we'll mark suspicious activity. IT administrator can then go back, check it, see that it's clean, right? And they can change that marking, right? Future future checkpoints, future restore points are created. You see another suspicious activity, right? This doesn't mean that you're having a ransomware attack. It means this is an encryption anomaly is occurring. So what needs to happen is you need to actually triangulate that, right? We can we can feed this into your SIMs, you know, you can leverage it with your socks, right? leverage this information, triangulate it, and then determine how to proceed. But at least here, if it does turn out to be a ransomware incident, you have an understanding of where um, an anomaly took place, right? What a good checkpoint might be and what are the ones to avoid, right? So you can lessen that impact, right? And you can get back up and running quicker. All right, second, how we actually approach um, handling VMs is very different from a lot of the other folks in the market, right? Um, and from backup solutions, right? So a lot of them, you know, they'll back um, VMs up, you know, um, they have different windows for that, you know, they're staggered, they don't necessarily align. What Zerto provides is actually we um, create virtual protection groups. Um, so what that means is actually we align the workloads as cohesive logical entities so that each VM is being restored together holistically, right? Or each application, I should say, is being restored hol holistically. This also reduces resources and helps you get back up and running. It helps at the recovery time objective. How quickly you're able to get your VMs back up and running significantly. And then a little bit of my favorite, right? You know, the one to many, so important, right? So I'm sure most of you are leveraging a data protection strategy of the three, two, one, right? And even, you know, right? But really thinking about Zerto as that additional repository for critical apps, right? So, and being able to take those journals and replicate them off site, right? Or to other locations um, is extremely important for providing, you know, distributed and decentralized um, uh, support for your data protection strategy. Right. So, you know, those um, three to one, um, uh, those one to three um, replications, right? You can leverage an MSP like Comport, right? Comport Secure. You can leverage the public cloud, um, any, any colo, um, on prem, however you choose, whatever your strategy is, there's flexibility there, right? So you can get that data where it's going to be safe. So when you need to um, fail over to it, you have it for you, right? So evolving that. Three, two, one strategy to a full two, two. Right. And this is, you know, this is what we all need, right? I need more automation in my life, right? Set it and forget it. We actually go back and do health checks a lot, right? Because once you install and pre configure um, some settings, right? Um, Zerto takes care of a lot of that back end work on its own, right? We can automatically, um, you know, uh, include posts, right? We can even include new VMs 
um, as they come into the environment, right? We can use and leverage the vSphere tags and Kubernetes um, annotations, right? To ensure that all critical VMs within your workloads are part of this replication, right? They're properly load balanced. Um, you know, we can scale, right? As there's maybe increased traffic, right? We can scale up, we can scale out whatever you need, all of this is done automatically. So those most important, those critical applications are fully protected. And the next thing, right? So I've mentioned a few times, right? When an incident occurs, specifically ransomware, right? And it's not something we all can agree, maybe we're not practicing enough, right? Um, how do you orchestrate that, right? How does that occur? How do you fail over? Um, you know, how manual is it? How many steps are involved? Um, do you have to make any judgments about what needs to happen? Who do you need to communicate with, right? From a Zerto perspective, you know, it is a three-step process, right? So when you're in that worst possible moment, you basically select the apps in the VM, right? You select that point of time that you need to go back into, that time travel of when everything was good, rainbows and unicorns. Um, you know, and then you can start your failover, right? So it relieves the pressure from you. It's already been done. It's three clicks, you get it done, okay? And that really is, you know, the speediest of the mechanics, right? But, you know, ensuring that three clicks. Um, and then lastly, you know, the most, you know, what I consider one of the most important things, right? So prior to data protection, I was, I was in the security um, field, right? And we would run tabletop workshops and we would ask folks, you know, who has an incident response plan? And everybody would raise their hand. You know, who's practiced it? Hands would fall down. When was the last time you updated it, right? Um, you know, we don't eat our vegetables. We don't exercise enough. We don't sleep enough, right? We don't drink enough water. You know, we don't practice our DR, right? And this is something that we have to, right? Zerto provides basically failover tests, right, that run in a sandbox that you can actually practice and ensure that your DR plan protects everything it should, works appropriately, and that it's not going to fail when you need it most, right? So this particular um, example is of a customer in Connecticut, um, you know, fairly local. So sorry, I'm sitting in New York City right now based in Boston. Um, you know, they had a very complicated DR um, exercise requirement, right? They had multiple tools. It took them three days to complete. They had to go in over the weekend, right? And uh, it was complicated by multiple, you know, run books and things of that nature, right? After installing, and this is interesting, like, this is great. You basically select the apps in the VM, right? You select that point of time that you need to go back into, that time travel of when everything was good, rainbows and unicorns, um, you know, and then you can start your failover. Right. So it relieves the pressure from you. It's already been done. It's three clicks. You get it done. OK. And that really is, you know, the speediest of the mechanics. Right. But, you know, ensuring that three clicks. Um, and then lastly, you know, the most, you know, what I consider one of the most important things. Right. So prior to data protection, I was I was in the security um, field, right? And we would run tabletop workshops and we would ask folks, you know, who has an incident response plan? And everybody would raise their hand. You know, who's practiced it? Hands would fall down. When was the last time you updated it, right? Um, you know, we don't eat our vegetables. We don't exercise enough. We don't sleep enough, right? We don't drink enough water. You know, we don't practice our DR, right? And this is something that we have to, right? Zerto provides basically failover tests, right, that run in a sandbox that you can actually practice and ensure that your DR plan protects everything it should, works appropriately, and that it's not going to fail when you need it most, right? So this particular um, example is of a customer in Connecticut, um, you know, fairly local. So sorry, I'm sitting in New York City right now based in Boston. Um, you know, they had a very complicated DR um, exercise requirement, right? They had multiple tools. It took them three days to complete. They had to go in over the weekend, right? And uh, it was complicated by multiple, you know, run books and things of that nature, right? After installing, and this is interesting, like, this is great, right? Um, 
It's a tremendous use case for Zerto. Um, these folks purchased on this use case, right? Um, because they were having so many problems, right? And we were able to reduce their DR testing from three days to three hours, right? How many more times are you going to test as a result? How many more times are you going to practice? How many more you know, times are you going to be confident that um, this is going to work, right? And right, Zoe's in the pudding. This is a customer of ours based in, in Belgium. And, you know, unfortunately, I mean, it's unfortunately, right, they got hit. Um, you know, this was before they had installed Zerto. Um, so they were just leveraging backup. There was no other, um, you know, technology in place to help with um, improving their recoverability. And as you can see, right, 12 hours of data loss and, you know, it took them over two weeks to get back up and running. Um, you know, then, you know, they had a come to Jesus moment, right, and uh, evaluated what else can we do to speed our recovery, right? This will happen again. And that's the thing with the ransomware, right? When, you know, cyber criminals target you, they're going to target you again, right? How quickly can you store up the gaps, you know, for the reasons that they got in initially, right? If you're a victim once, you're most likely, unfortunately, um, going to be hit again or attempted to be hit, right? And unfortunately, these guys were, they had installed Zerto, and you can see the significant reduction in both their data loss and their time to recover, right? So that's what we're trying to do. Um, um, if you need more case studies, you know, um, either involving your size organization, your industry, you know, talk to Dana, talk to the Comport team, bring us in. We can absolutely share more customer success stories, you know, and ROI around our solution and how we can really help you. All right. So thank you all for the time. Thank you.